Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. Today's video, well, it's one that I've been working on for a very long time. I mention often that I'm behind on mail call stuff showing the things that I've opened, but this one really takes the cake. It's not a mail call video though, it's about a Commodore 128. Now the oldest footage in this video dates back to July of 2019, two years ago. And it's actually amazing to see how much my production quality has improved since that time. I was using different editing software, but more so the camera equipment I was using, the microphone, the lighting was a lot worse. So I apologize about that. But I think it's gonna be an interesting video and I'm glad to finally follow up and finish it off. So without further ado, let's get right to it. So some of you have been asking whatever happened with the really orange Commodore 128 that I got. If you recall from the last video, which I'll link to in the video up above, the computer had no power supply, so I replaced the power supply connector, and otherwise the thing kind of worked. It had a matching super yellow disk drive that came with it, and I was always intending to maybe try to retrobrite this thing and make it my Commodore 128. Well, since that time, I've actually acquired a couple more Commodore 128 flats. And as you can see with this one, it's in really, really nice shape. This machine has sort of been relegated to my parts bin at this point. Now you can see it's definitely a little worse for wear in that some of the keys are missing. And that's specifically because the nice looking 120 I just showed did have a couple broken keys and broken plungers. So I just salvaged them off this machine. If we turn on the power though, you'll see this computer is actually working totally fine. There it is, into Commodore 128 mode. The condition of the case just made me think that even if I retrobrite this thing, it's still going to be pretty sun damaged and it's never going to look that great. So yeah, parts machine it is. Here's the matching 1571 disk drive that came with it. And if you look at the side, you can see how orange it is on the lower section, but the top's actually not looking so bad. And that's because I actually did attempt to do a retrobrite session on this. And yeah, I mean, this could look good again, but I figured why bother? I have three other perfectly good non-yellowed 1571 disk drives. So again, this one has just sat disassembled. Here's the faceplate since I got this thing. So just the other day, I was talking with my friend, Geek with Social Skills, about what to do with these parts. He's the one who helped me paint my Commodore 64 bread bin, that nice brown color. And if you, I'll link to that video down below where I show off my different colored bread bins. And that gave me an idea. What if we take these parts, these really yellowed parts, minus the keyboard, of course, and we paint this stuff? How's it gonna turn out? So I'm gonna disassemble this and I'm gonna give it to Geek with Social Skills and we're gonna see how it turns out. Let's see what he comes up with.
when Geek with Social Skills brought this over to my house after it had been painted, I was completely, completely blown away. And while that was back in 2019, the end of 2019, looking at this thing today still blows my mind. So you're wondering about the paint job, I'm sure. Well, it turns out that Geek with Social Skills wife, Michelle, is an artist. And he asked her if she would take this sad old computer and turn it into something really cool. And from my perspective, I said, you can do anything you want to this thing. I don't care what it comes back looking like. So basically free reign. And that is what has happened. Just look at this thing. I guess it's an oil-based paint that went on here. I'm not totally sure about that, but it has this incredible motif with the blue like water and a sunset almost and gold leaf that goes on as an accent. And here is the little lever from the disk drive even, and that has gold leaf on it. I just can't get over how stunning this thing looks. So I'm recording this footage in July, 2021. So it's been quite a while since I've gotten this thing back and it hasn't been shoved away in a box hidden from view. I've actually had this up in my home theater room downstairs where I have a little bit of a showcase uh, with a bunch of cool computers. And this has been up on a shelf there on display, but obviously not fully assembled as a working computer. So today is the day to actually turn this thing back into a working Commodore 128 and working 1571 disk drive to really complete this project. So I want to start by assembling the 1571 disk drive and then we'll get to the computer. Let me grab the constituent parts from this disk drive. So for the last two years, I basically had all the parts for this machine sitting around and hopefully I can remember how it all goes back together. Now I recall when I got this disk drive, which came with the very yellow machine, I had to do a repair on this. I'm pretty sure there's a video about it. I mean, over two years ago at this point, but this small IC here is in a socket. I'm pretty sure that was causing this disk drive to, it worked, but it wouldn't seek properly. So you couldn't really read any disks. I've installed some heat sinks and it looks like I have Jiffy DOS on there as well which on the 1571 is a really easy install. You can just swap out the ROM with an EEPROM. You don't need to make an adapter or anything like that like you do on a 1541. And then we have the power supply and we have the floppy drive. And I did save in this bag, inside this little cup here, the screws and the LEDs for the front panel, stuff like that. And yes, some people might recognize it that this is actually a sample cup, like a urine sample cup, but don't worry, it was never used as such. They're perfect for holding screws and things like projects like this because they're a very good seal and they're not gonna come open accidentally. So you can be sure that you put all the parts in there and stick it in a bag, put it all together, and you will be able to find them again. Now I open up the disk drive here and the inside is not painted, right? Michelle just painted the outside, which makes sense, right? Because once this thing's together, you're not gonna be able to see inside of it anyways. All right, now I'm gonna try to figure out how this thing goes back together. I'm just about to realize here that you have to put the main PCB in first before you put the disk drive mechanism in. Just like with the Commodore 1541, the connectors that go from the drive mechanism to the main PCB are not keyed. So you can't really tell which orientation they go on the motherboard. So before you take them off, you should take a marker and draw a mark between the connector and the motherboard so you can align them back up again. All right, there we go. That is one 1571 disk drive reassembled. Look at that. All right, next up, let's reassemble this Commodore 128. 
which is clipped together because these cases do that when they are pushed together, but there we go. You can see when it's open some of the evidence of its former life. So I'm glad that's sort of there as a tell of what this machine used to look like before it was turned into something very special. All right, so this is the bag of screws and stuff that I had from this machine. It has the power LED in there as well. And inside this Commodore 128 flat is the original motherboard, the one that has the modified power connector that was in the yellow one. And you'll notice this keyboard looks different than the one that was in the 128. And that is because the keyboard that was in the yellow machine has been given up as a parts machine to fix a lot of other keyboards. So you notice the two very yellow keys there on this keyboard? Well, it's because when I was given this 128, it had a couple broken keys and I used stems and the keys from the yellow one to fix this machine. Here is the original keyboard, which I won't be reusing. So you can see lots of keys have been pillaged off of it to fix other machines, also for other people as well. Now the base plate, which is this metal plate here, uh, includes all these sort of slider mechanisms. I don't know, whatever these things here are that the plunger rides in. Well, there's some broken ones here if that comes out in the camera. And that is because this base plate actually came from the Commodore 128D, the desktop version. That was donated to me and had some damage in shipping. So I swapped the very yellow keyboard base plate, which had a little bit of sort of paint peeling on it, but it was otherwise undamaged, into the 128D. And then I put all the good non-yellowed keys from the 128D onto um, that new base plate. So this is an amalgamation of that broken base plate and keys have been taken to fix other keyboards like these two keys on the Numera keypad were obviously taken off the yellow keyboard as well. So anyways, long story short, I won't be reusing this. I'll be using the keyboard that's in this machine along with the motherboard that's in here, which was the original motherboard that came from this computer. And I like that the fact that these two yellow keys are on here kind of will show the original roots of this machine. That along with the, the yellowing spots here, just you know, so you don't forget where this machine came from. So now it's just disassembly time of the 128, which is kind of boring, so I won't be showing that in detail. We'll just do a time lapse. And there we have it. Look at this thing. <laughs> it just looks amazing. It looks so amazing. I'm speechless. I am completely rendered speechless. I absolutely, absolutely love how this thing looks. The 128, not really my favorite Commodore, actually. I don't really like it that much. I feel it's sort of flimsy and just wasn't a great machine, but this one, this one is so transformed into something that is stunningly beautiful and just an incredible art piece. It just, it blows my mind. The Ho-Hum 1571 disk drive is no exception. This thing is a stunner, absolute stunner. So it goes without saying that we need to know if this computer works now, right? It should, but I didn't test the flat 128. I took the original motherboard out of, so it worked when I put it back together, but who knows? So let me get some cables. We'll plug this thing in and we'll see if it's functional. There we go. Look at that, booted right up. Well, it's trying to boot off the floppy drive, which isn't gonna work. Jiffy DOS 601 is installed. So let's do Go64 to switch over to 64 mode to see the much more pleasing blue background of the 64. And there it is. Boy, that looks cool. And I think to go full circle with like the Field Found 64, here is the Sid Burners disc that I used with the Field Found 64 when I first got that thing up and running. Just load that up. 
and we'll connect up a gamepad so I can control it because this disc requires a gamepad. I have the volume on the TV turned down so there's no sound there. We'll just turn that up a little bit. And let me load Legend Intro, my favorite track from this disc, of course. There it is. And that is the art piece Commodore 128, arguably one of the best looking 128s probably on the planet. If you know of other cool looking 128s that have been specially modified like this one has, definitely put a comment down below in the comment section. I hope this project inspires people to take some wrecked old computer and instead of just returning it back to the original beige color, be a little bit daring, turn it into an art project, or at the minimum, paint it up with a different color. But if you know someone who's artistic or you're artistic yourself, have at it with a paintbrush. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? I could sand this thing down and repaint it with a beige color again to kind of return it back to stock is what it would have needed anyways because of all the sun damage. But of course, I would never do that to this because this is a true piece of art now. And I have to give a huge thank you and shout out to Michelle, the artist who did this for me. This computer, as I said 50 times already, I'm sure, looks absolutely stunning. I'm gonna put links in the description below to her website, and I think she has a YouTube channel as well. So check that out if you wanna see more of her work. I'd love to know what everyone thinks about this project, so definitely put your comments down below. And huge thanks to all my patrons. Their names are gonna be scrolling up the side of the screen. If you wanna become a patron, there is a link in the description below. And I guess that's gonna be it. Don't forget to check out my second channel, hit subscribe, all that good stuff, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. And that is gonna be it. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.